Hey, what's up? It's Ben from Watt Prep, and in this video, I am going to help you improve your butterfly pull-ups. We are going to go over three really common mistakes. If you've ever said something like, I feel like I'm gonna hit my face, or I can't figure out the rhythm, or this feels way harder than I think it should, then this video is for you. So again, a butterfly pull-up looks something like this. And if you want to look like that, this is the video for you. Before we get any further, we actually have free training. I have free training I wanna send you about butterfly pull-ups. Just go to wadprep.com slash pull-ups or click the link in the description or in the top comment below and I will send you a whole bunch of free pull-up training specifically for the butterfly pull-up. Let's talk about, first of all, why in the world do we wanna do a pull-up that makes us look like a flopping fish and has the name butterfly in it? That seems ridiculous and I fully admit even though I am a bona fide crossfitter, I think butterfly pull-ups are kind of silly and stupid looking, but there's a very specific reason that I do them and a lot of other athletes do them, and that is because it is the most efficient way to meet the pull-up standard. So a standard pull-up for CrossFit or functional fitness is we start with our arms fully locked out, and then we need to get or pass our chin above the vertical or horizontal plane of the pull-up bar. This is the most efficient and effective way to do that fast. So there's a couple different ways that we can get our chin above the pull-up bar. We have something like the strict pull-up, right? Sure, that's how a lot of uh, YouTube trolls want us to do our pull-ups, and that's totally fine. I do them in my training as well. Or we can do something that's called a kipping pull-up, and that's pretty easy. And it's more efficient and effective in stringing multiple together and doing them quickly than a strict pull-up. But if we want to really be fast at our pull-ups, then a butterfly pull-up, even though it looks ridiculous, helps us get through a lot of reps more quickly. So if we want to get through reps quickly, then butterfly pull-ups happen to be the quickest and most efficient way to go from full lockout to chin above the bar. And that's why we do them in this sport. If we're trying to work out for time, if we're trying to get as much work done in a short window of time, which is kind of the point of CrossFit and functional fitness, then butterfly pull-ups are an essential tool in your toolbox. So let's talk about the most common thing that I've ever heard when trying to teach people how to do butterfly pull-ups, and that's, I feel like I'm gonna hit my face. And I don't blame you. If you just go into the search bar and search butterfly pull-up fail or CrossFit pull-up fail, you'll see all kinds of stuff where people go flying off the bar or hit their face on it or, knock a tooth out. I've seen it all, folks. These are not necessarily a super safe controlled movement because there's a ton of moving parts. But if you're ready to learn butterfly pull-ups, this is the right video. There's a couple different things that I want to teach you. The first thing that you need to know is that in order to complete a butterfly pull-up, your chin just needs to pass above the vertical plane of the bar. I don't need to pull my chin above the bar where it's literally above the bar. The bar can be out here as long as my chin passes above that horizontal plane. When I'm doing butterfly pull-ups, I want you to think about getting your shoulder and chin up and away from the bar rather than trying to get your chin actually above the bar. The reason you feel like you're gonna hit your face or knock a tooth out or maybe all of the above is that a lot of times when people transfer from kipping pull-ups to butterfly pull-ups, they keep their chin in the same spot. So they try to do butterfly pull-ups and they end up doing something like this where they're pulling into the bar and they're getting really, really close to hitting their face in the bar. We don't want that. Instead, I want you to remember up and away. Up and away from where I start. Rather than getting my chin to here, instead, I'm gonna try to have my chin out here and over the bar. So when I'm doing butterfly pull-ups, you'll see my chin reaches its apex quite a ways away from the bar. That's because I'm getting my shoulder, I'm getting my torsos away from the bar, lifting my chin up. Let's say this is the bar right here, my chin, is out and away from it rather than right on top of it. If you can internalize that, the apex, the highest point of my chin, actually has quite a bit of distance between my chin and the bar, then you will feel much less likely to smack your face on the bar. Common problem or mistake number two is I can't figure out the rhythm. How can we get that rhythm? It's kind of like a dance move and it's a very weird, awkward dance move. So it's really easy to lose your rhythm. Too often I see athletes when they're trying to learn butterfly pull-ups, they hop up on the bar, they do a few reps, and they immediately start swinging around. So they'll do this. They'll get up, they'll get the chin over once, and then they're like, okay, and they're just crazy, and then they smack their face in the bar or something ridiculous. So in order to work on your rhythm, I have two different drills that I want you to practice. The first one is a great one for butterfly pull-up beginners. Again, I wouldn't mess with these drills until you can at least do 10 to 15 kipping chest bar pull-ups in a row. It's really not something I want you to mess with until you're really good at normal pull-ups, strict pull-ups, and kipping pull-ups. 
But if you are ready, here's what you need to practice your rhythm. I would just get a bench or you could use a box. That's totally fine. And what we're going to do is we're going to practice reverse bicycle kicks. When doing a butterfly pull up, I actually, rather than pedaling a bike like this, I want you to pedal the bike backwards. So with some sort of box or bench supporting you, I want you to practice pedaling backwards, lifting your chin, and then doing it again. So pedal backwards, lift your chin, do it again. And then you can eventually start to add it a little bit more aggressively. So I'm here, I scoop up, my chin lifts with that scoop, and then I fall back under. My chin lifts with the scoop, and then I fall back under. And then eventually, you can start to shrink it all together. So again, my feet scoop forward, my shoulders go back. Remember that chin up and away. And then I get my chin to the apex and then I'm falling back into the next rep. What we're trying to do is move your legs. So get that scoop of the leg. Again, the reverse bicycle kick. You can literally just stand here on the box and practice this because this is the movement of the leg. Reverse bicycle kick along with getting that chin up and away. As your leg is scooping and lifting, that's when your chin, shoulders are moving up and away from your original starting position under the bar. When you can combine those two things, you can switch legs and start practicing with the other leg. So here I am, I scoop, head and shoulders back, fall through. Scoop, head and shoulders back, fall through. Eventually, you can start to do it a little bit faster. Once you kind of have that rhythm down, again, this like awkward dance move where your chin isn't even getting close to above the bar, then what I want you to do is take the box away and do what I call mini butterfly pull-ups. So rather than trying to do the whole thing, I just want you to practice the rhythm. So here's what it looks like. Rather than trying to get your chin all the way above the bar, just do small ones. You'll see my chin isn't even getting close to above the bar, but I'm doing the reverse bicycle kick. So reverse bicycle kick, scooping my legs and getting my shoulders up and away. If you notice, when I do this, I can slowly but surely add more height to it. So many butterfly pull-ups, eventually, once you get the rhythm and once you're really feeling it, they can expand into full butterfly pull-ups. So we'll start with some kicks and then maybe some mini pull-ups where I'm bending my arms a little bit and eventually you can go all the way. So if you can't find the rhythm, start with an easier, smaller, simpler dance and then expand from there. And then eventually you'll be doing full butterfly pull-ups. So let's move on to common complaint or common mistake number three. And that's why do these feel harder? So butterfly pull-ups when done properly are actually really, really efficient and they're not even gonna fatigue your arms very much. But for the people who say that they fatigue really quickly when they're doing butterfly pull-ups, it's almost always because they're using strictly their arms, which is not what we want. The butterfly pull-up needs to involve your legs and hips. Just like kipping pull-ups, we've kind of taken the strict pull-up, we've modified it to get a lot more reps done in a shorter amount of time. And the way that we do that is by trying to get our arms out of the equation and get our core, hips, and legs into the equation because those are much stronger. When people struggle and they feel like butterfly pull-ups are really, really difficult, chances are they're doing something like this. And that's where they're using their arms almost exclusively. They're doing this and they're just nothing but arms. And just doing a few of them, whew, I can feel it in my bicep, I can feel it in my lats. It's very difficult. So how can we fix that? The number one tip that I coach our athletes who are in our butterfly pull-up breakthrough course is to finish your scoop. So. We talked about that reverse bicycle kick. I, I kind of mentioned earlier this, this whole like scooping of the leg as we were doing our reverse bicycle kick. Well, that's where we get most of our power in the butterfly pull up. So you'll notice when I'm using just arms, you can kind of see how like my legs kind of don't do anything. They're just kind of like kicking around a little bit. You're making it look like they're doing something, but they're not actually doing anything. What we need to focus on is really exaggerating that scoop. So I want you to imagine like it's an ice cream scoop. I'm scooping with my toes big ice cream scoop, and then I'm lifting it up as high as possible. Here's what it looks like in practice. When I scoop, I scoop and then pull, scoop, pull, scoop, pull. Just me scooping my legs like that is causing me to float up and above the bar. I'm actually barely using my arms. So for athletes who are saying, this feels way too hard, my arms are getting really tired, almost always it's because they're not using their legs. Watch me again, I'll show you the difference of not using my legs and hips, and then I'll show you a good couple good reps of me actually using my legs to finish that scoop, and you'll notice a little bit of a hip pop in there. So big scoop, good. Small, lazy, short scoop, not good. It's gonna fatigue your arm. So here are the bad. 
See how I'm not really finishing the scoop? And then here are the good. And now I'm just floating above the bar. So if you're having trouble, if you're feeling too fatigued, remember, finish your scoop, let those legs get long, really reach those toes out, and let them lift along with your body to get your chin above the bar. So if you are trying to finally make butterfly pull-ups easy, like everyone else makes them look, remember these three main things. Get your shoulders up and away. If your chin and shoulders are up and away, that means you're probably not gonna hit your face on the bar, and that's really gonna help. Do that along with practicing that reverse bicycle kick, AKA the butterfly kick, and then practice mini butterfly pull-ups. Then you'll be able to both have great head and shoulder position, along with having the right rhythm. Remember, it's a very awkward, weird dance that we're doing on the pull-up bar when we do butterfly pull-ups, but when you practice in smaller pieces on the box or a bench, or by practicing mini butterfly pull-ups, you will unlock that rhythm, and then you can expand from there. And then last but not least, make sure you're using your legs and hips. Finish the scoop. Allow those legs and feet to lift your body up. Don't shorten the scoop. We want more ice cream, folks, not less. Finish the scoop. Combine all three of these things together and you will have much smoother and more efficient butterfly pull-ups. If you want a free training course on more even juicier, sexier tips with a little bit of sample programming from our full butterfly pull-up breakthrough course, just go to wadprep.com slash pull-ups, enter your name and email, and I will send you free butterfly pull-up training. Last but not least, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, thumbs down if you didn't. Leave a comment below and let me know the one specific problem that you've been having with your butterfly pull-up and how this video is gonna help you fix it. I'll catch you next week, and in the meantime, good luck butterflying. Peace. I swear it looks like you're trying to migrate from the Pacific Ocean to like a stream that's like way up north because you're just flopping. You're a fish. Are you a marine mammal? Is that what you are? Now that he's gone, I might as well, you know, see what it's like.